Um, and I'll try to hang on to the time allotted. So with this, I quickly start with my topic, which is the evaluation of assessment and what we must know to interpret the result. Um, oh, now I can't move my slide. Oh God. Prof, at the bottom you have arrow, small arrow at the bottom, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can. The right side, right side? Uh, this one, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Can <laughs> Thank you, Hasna. <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, in this uh, presentation, what I have is the, uh, I'll be talking on uh, two aspects of the evaluation and which is very important for continuing quality improvement of the assessment as uh, uh, Prof. Um, uh, Wajid uh, Goha was talking about. Uh, the quality improvement and a continuing quality improvement of assessment is a necessity for accreditation requirement as well. So, <clears throat> Item uh, on the statistics side, item statistics, which uh, primarily means the uh, item analysis, uh, will be. <laughs> I'll be taking you through the descriptive statistics and the item analysis, which would include difficulty index, uh, denoted by p-value, discrimination index, uh, d-par, and the distractor efficiency, uh, uh, de, and the index of effectiveness, i.e. This is something I'm introducing new to be uh, to add on to the robust method of uh, statistic uh, of um, assessment evaluation uh, because this uh, uh, index of effectiveness will help uh, you all and uh, it's very effective because in uh, distractor efficiency we often are uh, loss which uh, would 63 33 which should be accepted as the norm so item of item index of effectiveness actually give you a very clear uh, options to decide on which distractor are working well and which is just taking a place in your um, uh, the uh, MCQ. Point by serial correlation is an uh, is an uh, another uh, very robust method uh, which would uh, help you to actually discriminate between good and poor st student like the discrimination index. Then I will quickly take you through the online assessment system generated metrics as the data analytics if you have that system online assessment that uh, you might have a lot of metrics generated uh, but uh, and if you, if you don't have data analyst in your in your center you can interpret it with excel playing little with the excel you can do that so excel actually is an offer you an excellent uh, um, uh, microsoft uh, package to actually analyze your result on the statistics side uh, when looking at the psychometrics i'll be talking on the reliability assessment uh, for MCQ, which is uh, KR20. And KR20, you shouldn't be carried away with this term. KR20 is nothing but is the uh, alternative to Cronbach Alpha in a dichotomous uh, assessment uh, items like OBA or uh, extended uh, matching, matching questions. The reliability of assessment in OSCE is an special issue. As uh, you all will see, Cronbach Alpha doesn't really work to give you the right uh, quantum of the uh, reliability. But the reason that uh, it doesn't capture the dimensionality, which OSCE has all the stations are different from other stations. So root mean square error, uh, error will be an robust test to do that. Validity of assessment as usual, I'll talk on uh, three or four uh, important areas and a standard error of measurement is something we must look at. And I'll touch on that and that uh, take home message. So uh, the psychometrics evaluation is based on assumption that the test under the evaluation is composed of items. So all tests has items uh, measuring one subject area. So uh, I'm sorry. So based on that, we evaluate, right? So the quality of the test as a whole is assessed by uh, estimating the internal consistent, the consistency of the items to the total score. So this is how we relate, be it a point by serial correlation, standard error of measurement, all are done this way. The first part of the item analysis estimate would be the item statistics. And the second part I'll be talking on the test statistics, particularly referring to the reliability. But this all is focused to MCQ and OSCE. Uh, and uh, these are the mostly used tool. So I thought I will be discussing this in this uh, prestigious conference. So looking at the item analysis, it is a process that examines students' response to individual items, right? So how or well you have constructed an item, and often we think when the item doesn't respond well, we blame students. But you'll be surprised if you run the standard error of measurement that many schools would not do. They rely on Cronbach Alpha, 
But Cronbach Alpha is something we should do away with it. The simple reason, if you have a 50, for example, OVA, your Cronbach Alpha is uh, 0.6, and you have you add another 20, your uh, the Cronbach Alpha or the reliability or the internal consist consistency will rise to 0.7 or 0.8 without having looked into the quality. So simply adding on the number of the items, you can have a high, and you shouldn't be very happy if the high Cronbach Alpha. So Cronbach Alpha is some, something we should give uh, away with it, and we should move on to some robust tests that I'm discussing today with you. So the item analysis is important to improve the quality of an item and to reuse the item in subsequent examination. If you want to bank in, bank in if you find that the some options, uh, some items are not doing well, resend to the uh, the to the uh, to the faculty who has uh, constructed this or structured this item and refix it. Maybe some uh, distractors uh, need to be refixed and then uh, re-administer. And after having the item analyzed analysis uh, evaluation you can uh, bank in. It can also be used to retain or delete the item as I say it's important before you bank in and an item analysis can also be used for faculty development activities. It's very important at department level or at your institution level these must be used for faculty development. It, it offers a good source of learning for the faculty. So looking at the item statistics I'll be taking you through very fast through the to hang on with the time allotted here. Uh, difficulty index, uh, discrimination index, distractor efficiency, and index of effectiveness and point by serial correlation. Looking at the psychometric aspects of assessment as a whole, I'll uh, touch on reliability assessment as KR20, validity of assessment, total item correlation inclusive of the point by serial. So point by serial correlation coefficient will go with both at item level and the, uh, the assessment as a whole. Standard error of measurement is something we must start looking into it. Many schools would ignore it because we, you know, at the end of the day of, after the assessment evaluation, the exam coordinator will present the uh, the the, uh, the evaluation of the assessment and Cronbach Alpha is especially shown. We all clap and we say, yeah, we have achieved point, more than 0.7. We are happy with it, but you will be surprised if uh, somebody question you, what is your standard error of measurement? And often it is quite high. This must be looked into because often we blame students for uh, producing a bad assessment evaluation. But uh, you will be surprised if you do standard error of measurement, you will find that uh, there, there's a large error. And if you do the generalizability coefficient, you will find the error is not solely from the students, mainly rather I would say from the faculty or an interaction of the faculty and the students. So we must first fix our end uh, uh, before we blame our students. So um, looking at the um, item difficulty, p-value is the percentage of the students who have answered the items correctly, right? And then item discrimination is uh, the differentiation between the good performing students versus poorly performing students. And this may go from minus one to plus one. And the uh, p-value may go from zero to 100% or in, in terms of decimal also, you can uh, uh, put that. So the formula used for the difficulty index is that there's a golden standard, which uh, may, somebody may have questioned me why upper 27 and lower 27 percent, uh, but this is what it is um, uh, in literature. And it is widely practiced that entire assessment is divided into upper performing 27, uh, upper performing student versus lower uh, 27 percent performing student. Uh, rest of the result is discarded by evaluation. But, uh, the, the, the research has proven that the upper 27 and lower 27 actually reflect on the entire result. So the difficulty index will be the students in upper group, uh, which is upper 27%, I call it criterion group. So upper and lower criterion groups. So number of students in the upper group and those uh, plus the lower group. And then you divide this by the entire number of the upper and lower. For example, you have 100 students. So upper group 27% and lower group 27% you will calculate, right? And uh, then you divide this, for example, if the upper and lower group are say 20, 20 uh, uh, students in each group, then you divide it by 20 upper and 20 lower, so divide by 20, uh, 40 students, right? Compared to this discrimination index would be number of students in upper group 
not plus, but minus number of students in the lower group who have answered it correctly. But this time you divide it by one criterion group. So if an example of 20, for example, I gave you uh, 100 students, if the upper 27%, assuming, right, I haven't calculated, so upper 27 is 20, and lower 20, this time you divide it by 20 only, not by 40, because you are looking the difference between the two groups, right? Now, uh, the uh, uh, the distractor efficiency, uh, the, uh, the first uh, important uh, thing to note would be the distractors are meant for to distract the poorly prepared student. Distractors are not there to distract or engage the good, uh, uh, well-prepared students. So it's always created to distract the poorly, right? And uh, then we have to decide which distractor is functioning well and which is just taking a space and not functioning well. So we do it in terms of uh, the, uh, the functional versus non-functional distractors. So what is functional distractor? So if you have a students of uh, uh, in a, um, a student of uh, a class of a student with 100 number taking the exam, 100 student taking the exam, if uh, any option is not taken up by uh, more than at or more than 5% student, it is called non-functional distractor, right? And then if it's taken up by more than 5%, it is uh, it will be uh, called the functional distractor. And why is so important? Because remember, if your distractor is poor, your quality of item is very good, but because of your distractor, non-functional, your item will be a, a low quality item. So it's so important. For example, I give you an example to understand it very clearly. For example, you have an item with um, uh, four um, um, uh, uh, options and three distractor, one true answer. And for example, none of the students pick up the two or three distractors. So this is a very easy question because distractors have uh, nothing to really disturb or distract the students uh, who are uh, moderately or poorly uh, prepared. So this, uh, this would be a very easy uh, item. Now, uh, I'm taking you, so on the distractor efficiency can be determined in number of non-functional distractor, whether they are three, uh, uh, two, three, four, two, one, right? So there's some noises coming uh, in the background. Somebody has to uh, shut down his uh, mic. Uh, Thanks, please. Uh, mute your mic. Okay, so uh, non-functional uh, distractor will the number of uh, uh, in, in number of uh, uh, non-functional distractor is it one, two, or three among the uh, the distractor options besides the correct answer? So uh, it will be if zero, then uh, non-functional distractor, then it is hundred uh, percent uh, item for a uh, uh, distractor efficiency wise, and so on and so forth. But what is more important is to determine the index of effectiveness. Excel offer you this, and uh, you can, if you have data sheet is developed, you can do it within minutes, okay? Uh, but if you have online assessment system, nothing like it. But most of the online assessment system will not give you item uh, index of effectiveness, right? So it's a very good index of effectiveness. It is calculated in the same way as discrimination index. Uh, and uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, and uh, now, okay, and, uh, and then uh, this will, if it is negative, if I, index of effectiveness is uh, denoted by a negative number, then this is a good distractor, meaning that the poorly performing students have been using this more often than the good uh, or well prepared student. But if it is uh, denoted with a plus sign of uh, the number, then it is not a good distractor because the good students have been distracted by this distractor. And if zero, zero, both have using it equally, the upper and lower, again, it is a uh, not good distractor. So all with uh, index of effectiveness plus and zero should be reconsidered to be revised. Those with minus are good. Uh, Okay, point by serial is a correlation of scores on individual item uh, versus a total scores. Uh, any number um, uh, below uh, point 0.2 is considered poor, uh, poor point by serial correlation. So what we do in the, here is that 
if say if students are uh, an item performed by this uh, the, the entire item say you have 100 obas and the result shows that the students have done well in 100 but one selective you select one item and then it you correlate this item performance with the rest of the item which has done well and if this item is not doing well, then there's something wrong. So we determine the point by serial correlation. It's not about the student's performance. It's about the item performance. But item performance, of course, is this indirectly student performance. But we look at the item in correlation to the, in, uh, to the entire uh, uh, item results. So this offers, again, a discrimination between good and the poor students. So uh, uh, high positive uh, point by correlation students are doing well overall uh, get uh, getting an item correct so if they are doing well in overall any other item they will be doing well as well so low or negative point by serial students who do poorly get the question right or those who uh, pass get it wrong right so any number i said below zero is alarming now I'll quickly take you, if you have online assessment system that uh, we have here in uh, my institution. So this is the summary, uh, which will be scanned by the uh, online assessment system. And uh, you can have a, uh, uh, can have the uh, standard deviation, the mean and uh, everything, uh, maximum, minimum score and all. But more importantly, you get uh, this one, which is the, uh, the uh, difficulty index and discrimination index, right? Only you have to interpret. Uh, uh, then uh, another most uh, important thing would be the next would be uh, you you can download also the distractor efficiency which is shown as one two three and four distractor and how many students have taken up uh, one uh, in item one so then you have to calculate the distractor efficiency as given above and I have explained already or you can uh, calculate your item of effectiveness right but Another or online assessment system can also generate a matrix which is point by serial correlation and anything below 0.2 is not good. And this is an alternative way to discriminate between the poor and good students. Okay. So now uh, after the item statistics, I'm taking you through the uh, test statistics. So first is the Cronbach Alpha. Cronbach Alpha for OBA is not uh, called Cronbach Alpha. It's just another, but in uh, SPSS, if you have to do it, you will be using your Cronbach Alpha option. But this is KR20 because it's dichotomous. Um, OBA, for example, for right answer, they get one. For poor answer, they will get zero. So it is the estimate of the internal consistency. And it uh, it is achieved as Cronbach Alpha. I just name is changed KR20, right? But in uh, uh, Nova, in uh, Excel, I'll, I'll show you how do you do it. Cronbach Alpha is more appropriate for uh, nominal interval data. And uh, SPSS KR20 is done similar way as it is done for Alpha in SPSS. But uh, how would you do? And uh, this is the range. So below 0.6 tests is not reliable. Uh, 0.6 onward to 0.7 is acceptable. 0.7 to 8 is uh, considered good. And uh, above that is excellent. So a simple way of doing it is uh, in Excel, you can download the uh, data and uh, analysis uh, soft package, right, uh, software, and then you can easily run, you can run the ANOVA in this. And uh, with ANOVA, you will, you just go down to the, if I have the, yeah. So in ANOVA, you move down to this table, which gives you the, uh, uh, the mean square error here, the mean square error and the mean square rows. So you use this formula, um, KR20, one minus mean square error divided by mean square rows, which is given or generated by your ANOVA data analysis uh, tool package that you will be using. And then uh, you get uh, this, uh, uh, give your um, uh, estimate uh, for the KR20, alternatively the Cronbach Alpha. Standard error of measurement uh, is again another um, a, a robust assessment tool. You must all do it. Besides how good your Cronbach Alpha is, you must do it and you'll be surprised that a high Cronbach Alpha can have a high standard of error of measurement as well. So when we talk of the, uh, the theoretical, the components like uh, OBA, MQ or uh, other, then it is uh, standard error of measurement. When you do it in OSCE, it, the same thing is a standard error of estimate, right? Because in OSCE, you know, uh, these days when you do OSCE, you have a global rating and a checklist score. 
so uh, is, is uh, but uh, it is uh, the 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 amount of error that is suggested in both uh, would be read uh, as uh, depend if it is more than so more than two any error if any assessment with more than two uh, three and above is considered not a good assessment right so you have to look into it so uh, so what it provides it provides accurate score in written tests item right and in uh, uh, performance test it is called SEE standard error of estimate so standard error of measurement is the standard deviation of the error of measurement right and uh, we see what the score we produce from the assessment is not the true score is the observed score okay and observed score uh, we, we we would never be able to uh, achieve the true scores right this is something I need and assessment that a student's performance is never achieved as the true score is an observed score uh, minus error. So unless you adjust the error, which is standard error of measurement for the theoretical uh, um, uh, component and for the performance or OSCE is a standard error of estimate, unless you adjust that, that will not reflect the true performance of the student. For the true score, you have to adjust this score, which hardly we do, but we must start doing it. Particularly, I'm referring to the Asian country. So the OSCE as a measurement of clinical competence uh, is the not Cronbeck Alpha. I remind you again, it is a robust test. Uh, you should do it root mean square error, right? Even though the, uh, the efforts are made to control all sources of error, you will be surprised that all reported in literature, OSCE is uh, 0.141 to 0.88. And a lot number will not be able to achieve even 0.7, which is acceptable. So what is the reason? Dimensionality issue, right? And uh, um, uh, the number, the compared to OBA, the numbers is small. So you add on OSCE station, the Cronbach Alpha will rise. So uh, it's not the true reflection, but the true reflection of the reliability do the root mean square error, right? It takes a, a workshop to do, and it's easy. Once you learn, you can do it, and you really would like it doing it. So um, we do uh, with the bottle ride regression method, we calculate the, uh, the uh, um, estimated value. And then with this estimated value, we can predict the any student's uh, result, uh, adjusting the global rating and the checklist score. So this formula is used, right, for bottle ride regression method. So this method uh, is an examinee center standard setting method uh, categorized by experts decision based on examinee's actual performance, right? So they will mark in OSCE, they will, the station is marked by the actual performance as well as they give a global rating, right? Uh, overall um, assessment of the students. And you will be surprised that the literature has confirmed the global rating is much more efficient than the checklist score. So uh, modern regression method can also be used to review the appropriateness of the OSCE checklist. So if the global rating is not really in aligned with the checklist score, we must think of because checklist score provided it is done by the uh, senior clinician is always better than the, uh, the global rating is always better than checklist score. Reliability may be inflated if the global rating and the checklist rating are marked close. And this often happened with the junior clinicians when they are put to uh, be the invigilators or the uh, examiner in OSCE. Um, they, uh, they, they fear that they, if the, their checklist score is not, uh, their global rating score is not to the checklist score, they often uh, give their global rating close to that. And we recommend then never uh, um, calculate the, um, the checklist score uh, unless you have already given your global rating. Because once you calculate, a natural tendency is that you want to bring uh, keep your global rating close as well. But that could be some student may not be safe for community practice, right? Checklist score, you they get a lot of marks uh, unnecessary, for example, introducing themselves to the to the patient, uh, explaining them the procedure, thanking them towards the end. Every this procedure steps will uh, fetch them. Sure it's, it's a nice presentation, and we give you already uh, extra time. And we give you another two times too, <laughs> because okay. we are beyond time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, so the uh, thank you very much, sir. So the root mean uh, root mean square error actually will give you a true reflection. 
whereby it will also will tell you where, whether the global rating has been uh, done well or not. Um, I give you, and since, since I have been given extra time, so I'll give you one example and you'll appreciate. I was invited by one of the institutions to do the, uh, uh, to do the um, uh, one OSCE station, as a, uh, to do the evaluation of the OSCE station. So when I went to the institution, I said, can you give me, I'm an ENT person, can you give me a station so that I can be an examiner and uh, evaluate your uh, OSCE um, with this station and all. So they gave me an station. So this, this was about a tricostomy tube, which was uh, uh, accidentally removed uh, by the uh, patient. And um, as an ENT surgeon, the students for uh, ENT uh, doctor, they were supposed to reinsert the tracheostomy tube. So we gave uh, the, the station uh, given was a mannequin with a tracheostomy tube and a tracheostome created in the mannequin. So they were, uh, and you, if you all know the, those who have, have the experience of putting in the tracheostomy tube, there is a stellate with tracheostomy tube, right? So immediately when we put the tracheostomy tube, we remove the stellate, right? So, so that patient can breathe. So believe you me, first student came, he did so well according to the checklist score, but he uh, did not remove. And uh, <clears throat> then in OSCE, you also, you are given uh, the, the, the instruction that uh, you will be observing, not you will, cannot communicate with the student, just observe. So he did so well every step, but he did not remove the stellate. There was an itching in my hand. I wanted to ask him, have you missed out something? And because, you know, if you do not remove the stellate, actually uh, with the uh, tracheostome, uh, uh, without tracheostomy tube in, still patient can breathe. But you put the tracheostomy tube and top, you do not remove the stellate, patient will be choked. So what to do? I was uh, I wasn't supposed to speak to the students, so um, I had uh, because he was unsafe to me. So my global rating failed him. On checklist, he scored eighty six marks. Now imagine. So where the problem lies? The problem lies in the checklist score. They have not put. Uh, there should have been a step where the removal of the stellate is a necessary step, and they should have given more marks to that. So this student fail with checklist score 86%. But to my surprise, every student was doing that. Now this indicate either in their teaching, the whoever taught them about how to reinsert the, they, they didn't emphasize on removing the stellate. So everybody was leaving it behind except two students out of uh, almost 100 students. So I failed all of them and I was uh, like, uh, taken by the admin that what have you done uh, prof you have failed our, our student i say they are unsafe uh, i can't but the problem is main, this also reflects the teaching has not been emphasizing on their doing a tracheostomy tube insertion properly and secondly it was not covered in the checklist score if i have to produce a, a oski on that i would would uh, give maximum mark for removing the because you know how do you develop your uh, assessment items you know you develop your assessment item from the misconception of the students i don't go when i am i am asked by the examination unit to develop four or five or, or oba i don't open my book and do from there from my diary that i have been maintaining where was the misconception during my teaching so i develop my item from those misconception of the students so remember that uh, uh, this is very important how you develop your oski station and um, uh, uh, how do you develop your checklist score? Otherwise, global rating and checklist score. But this, when I have failed all the students, but the global rating have passed them with the color, uh, high color marks. So this was a point to ponder whether this checklist, uh, this station is probably properly developed or not. So now looking at the test st statistics towards the validity. So validity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shahid. Uh, most welcome. Because, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, session. And uh, just we to highlight that uh, the presentation of Dr. Shu'la and uh, Dr. Karim Qayyumi is for technical issue. We cannot uh, uh, operate it on online, so it will be uh, uh, uploaded on the website of uh, SIV, inshallah, you'll find it there. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Tabasmuli uh, will introduce our last speaker. Uh, Dr. Naveed Yusuf from Pakistan and his uh, journey. After that, we'll have question and answer. 
so uh, uh, that inshallah. so Thanks. that incidentally my last slide also so on validity you look, oh, yeah okay. <laughs> on validity you look at the content validity construct validity and concurrent validity and thank you very much uh, with this thank you